and we are going to do problem number five, which says find a unit vector in the same direction as v. So here we go. Everybody's with me. V is the vector negative 2, 1. Now, what do I mean by a unit vector? Anybody want to take a wild guess? We haven't talked about it, so I don't expect you to know, but maybe you have an idea. A unit vector. Well, a unit vector is a vector whose length is 1. A unit vector is a vector whose length is 1. Um, did we have a little bit of vocabulary on yesterday's test? Yeah. 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 Have we had some new vocabulary words in this unit? Things like magnitude and now a unit vector. Magnitude is length. That's right. It's a vocabulary word. What is a unit vector? A vector whose length is 1. Now, what is the length of this vector v? No, no, the length of that is not 1. If you drew a picture of it over 2, up 1, over 2, up 1, how long would it be? Root 5. Its magnitude is the square root of 5. So is this a unit vector? No, because if you're a unit vector, your length would have to be 1. All right, so your job in this problem is make it a unit vector. Now that is really easy to do. All we're going to do, here's the picture. All we're going to do is divide everything by root 5. Now, if I divide everything by root 5, how long is that now? Now it's 1, isn't it? Well, they are, but they're the new vector then. So your unit vector is going to be negative 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. I'm not done yet. That's my first step. The root 5 was the magnitude of the original vector. Pythagorean theorem. We talked about that last time. A couple days ago. And then like PJ said, I'm going to rationalize this. So I'll multiply by my root 5s. And I end up with this being my final answer. But what I want you to remember is, how did I take this random vector and make it a unit vector? What did I have to do? Two things. What was the first thing I had to do? Find its magnitude. And I found its magnitude by doing the Pythagorean theorem. And then what did I do? Once I got the magnitude, what did I do? I took the original two numbers, the x and the y of the original, and divided them by that number, that magnitude. So when we see problem B, and it's exactly the same problem, it says find a unit vector, what is the first thing you're going to do? You're going to find the magnitude of this vector. All right, so when I draw a picture of it, over 6 down 2, how long is it? This is its magnitude right here. How long is it? square root of 40. Boys and girls, we are seniors in high school. That's the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to explain it. 
36 plus 4 is 40. The square root of 40. A squared plus B squared is C squared. And you might say to me, oh, it's negative. You square it. It doesn't matter if it's negative. You're squaring it. Now, what's the square root of 40? Square root of 40. 2 root 10. And again, we're seniors in high school. I'm not explaining that to you. 40 is 4 times 10. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 root 10. Now, this is the magnitude of the original vector. This is not the answer. I need my unit vector now. And how did we say we were going to find our unit vector? Take these two original coordinates and divide it by 2 root 10. So again, I am not done. This is like my initial step. 2 root 10. I'm dividing each coordinate by the magnitude of the vector. Now I'm going to simplify. 2 goes into 6 3 times. And 2 goes into 2, 1. So I took care of that part. Now what do I need to do? So 3 root 10 over 10 and negative 1 root 10 over 10 is the answer to the question. What's step one? I'm making it a unit vector. What's step one? Find the magnitude. Oh, this is kind of a weird one. Zero, four would look like this, right? It just goes up four. So how long is it? If it just goes up four, how long is it? Four. So its magnitude is just four. When you drew that vector, didn't you count up one, two, three, four? That's how long it is. You didn't go over and up, you just went up. Now, how do you make that a unit vector? Like the regular. Take the original coordinates and divide them by four. So we end up with an answer of what? What's our final answer? Zero one. There's your unit vector. All right, you try the last one. <coughs> Making it a unit vector. That's not even a radical, so you don't have to worry about simplifying or anything. It's just negative three-fifths, negative four-fifths. All right, so we'll move on to the next part. So one more time, because we got to remember this now next week. How do we find a unit vector? What did you get? What's 9 and 16? How do we find the unit vector? Two steps. What do we do first? Find the magnitude of the original vector. Draw a picture of it. Do the Pythagorean theorem. What do you do then after you find the magnitude of the original vector? Divide the original coordinates by whatever you got. And then simplify if necessary. Okay? All right, part six. We have a vector. This 
is called its direction angle, in case you were wondering. And its magnitude is 16. So we have a picture of maybe some kind of force, like a 16 pound force, acting at an angle of 37 degrees with the horizontal. And your job is to find the components. Now, kids, these are components. This is what we mean by components. They're also called coordinates. So that's X and Y. So somehow out of this picture, we have to find the X and the Y. Any thought on how we might do that? You know how to do that. You've done this before. Not with that exact words, but you have found that X and Y before. How do we do that? So, Katoa. Absolutely. This is a right triangle. When I dropped that perpendicular down, I made a right triangle. So, I'm going to look at this angle right here. Which side is this? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Adjacent. Which side is this? So what function is adjacent and hypotenuse? Uh, uh, cosine. cosine. So I'm going to say cosine 37 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So Ka Toa, Anna, a little sleepy. All right, here we go. How do we solve that? Cosine 37 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. How do I figure out what X is? Multiply by, so 16 cosine 37 will be my X value. Make that in on my calculator. 16 cosine 37. I got 12.78. What did you get? 12.78. So can you see it's the same kind of problem? 
and I am finding, I'm going to make my triangle, I am finding X and Y. Now, this is a right triangle, right? Mm -hmm. So with regard to that angle, which side is this? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Adjacent. So cosine 40 equals x over 10. Would you agree with that? Yes. You could say sine 40 equals y over 10. Which one you start with does not matter. But I'll tell you this, cosine will always go with x and sine will always go with y. So I'm going to come up with an x value and a y value. Are you typing in 10 cosine 40 and 10 sine 40? And this is 7.66 and this is 6.43. Now I want to talk about that because like I said, this problem has a tricky piece to it. Anybody catch the tricky piece? Yeah, what's negative? Oh, 7.66 has to be negative. Why is that negative? It didn't come out negative. Because right? it's on the left side of the y-axis. Very good. Now, I didn't oh, worry I about see. that in this problem. Why didn't I worry about it in this problem? Because all the positives are positive. Everything in quadrant one, right? Sure. But if you're not in quadrant one, if you draw your vector and it's not in quadrant one, then something is going to be negative and you need to make it negative. The calculator's not going to do it for you. Okay? All right, let's see what we got next. Oh, we got another one. Yay, let's do it. So a magnitude of 8 and an angle of 31. Now, having just had the conversation we had, tell me about my x and y in this problem. They're both negative. They're both going to be negative. Everybody got that? All right, let's see if you can find the numbers. What do you think about that? Everybody okay? Yeah. Alright, let's do the last one real quick and then we're moving on to the next section.
What do you think? You okay with that? You are my answers? more parts to go. Let's stay focused. Find the magnitude and direction angle. All right, now I'm going to draw a 3, 2. 3, 2. You have already found the magnitude about a million times. What is the magnitude of that vector? direction angle. This is this angle right here. So like in this problem we had a 15 and in this problem we had a 31 and we have a 40. Now we have to figure out what this angle is right here. Any ideas how we might figure out what that angle is? We have to do second something. And what I would suggest is, I really don't want to mess around with that number, so I'm going to use this and this. So that would be tangent opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of theta is two-thirds. So I'm kind of working backwards now. What is the angle? The angle I find by doing second tangent two-thirds. So second tangent, two-thirds, 33.69, and that is your direction angle, 33.69. Okay, so what buttons did I press to get that? How did I get that 33.69? Second tangent. And two over three because it's opposite over Adjacent. Now, like always, there's a little twist in the next one. Just a bit of a twist. First of all, magnitude. That's easy. We've done that a zillion times. How long is that vector? What is the magnitude? Root 26. Now, let's find this angle right here. Okay, how did we do it last time? We did tangent, right? So the tangent of that angle would be 5 over 1. Now, I am not going to deal with the negative. I don't care if you do. I'm not going to because I want to know how big that angle is. And if I second tangent 5, it tells me this angle is 78.69. If you put the negative in, you're going to get negative 78.69. And that doesn't really make sense, so you're going to skip the negative anyway. So I just don't even put it in. But it's up to you. It doesn't matter. I need to know how big that angle is. Did everybody get 78.69? Now, here is the tricky part. This is the direction angle. The direction angle has to start on the positive x-axis. So this is the direction angle. 
78.69 is not the direction angle. Does anybody have an idea how we might figure out what the direction angle is, Jamal? Uh, the 180 minus answer. Exactly. Exactly. And that gives us 101.31. And that is your direction angle. Now, kids, the reason you got to use the 101 is which quadrant is the original vector in? Quadrant two, right? If you told me it had a direction angle of 78 degrees, that's in quadrant one. Zero to 90 is quadrant one. This vector is not in quadrant one. So I need to alter the angle to get it moved into quadrant two. Now we're going to have to do the same thing with C. Let's work on C. <coughs> While I am thinking of it, don't forget Monday is a special day. What's Monday? Friday. Yes, and remember you have the opportunity to bring it something around and have it over to share with the class, right? Monday is Friday. All right, what's our magnitude? <laughs> guys, 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 what's our magnitude? Root 45, let's clean that up. Root 45 is 3 root 5. All right, that's the magnitude. There's a two-part question. Find the magnitude. Now we want the direction angle. So let's find this guy first. How shall we find that? Tangent of that angle is what? Opposite over uh, 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 opposite over adjacent. So it's six over three on the two. And what do I type on my calculator? Second tangent two. And I got sixty three point four three. Now, if you tell me the direction angle is 63.43, I will laugh at you because that's quadrant one. And this is not in quadrant one. You need to move it all the way around into quadrant three. So how will we get an angle that describes that whole distance? Add the 63 to what? 180. Isn't this 180? Yeah. And then 63 more? Yeah. So the direction angle is actually 243.43. Did I add it right? So you can't subtract it from 270? No. The angle must start here and travel this way. 270 is not involved. Okay. Not even, let's pretend we're not. We're going to 180 and then 63 more. <laughs> Alright, there's one more of these and we'll get a couple more to do. One, negative four. Here we go. Tell me the magnitude of one, negative four. Do 17. my direction angle. Now, we find the angle inside the triangle first, right? Always. So let's find that angle. What, what can you tell me about that angle? The tangent is 4 over 1. Angle 75.96. 
Now remember, the direction angle starts here and goes all the way till it hits the vector. This is the vector right here. So how am I going to find that angle? Now think before you speak. Use your logic, Sam. Now think about that, Sam. This would be 270. Is this 75? No, 75 is over here. 360 minus 75.96, 284.04. So my direction angle is 284.04 degrees. Well, it's a different situation. I'm starting here. How far is it to here? Plus another 63. To get to this vector, I took 180 plus 63. This is actually 63. This is the angle. This is not the angle. The angle is here. Here's the angle. That is not 75. I can figure out what that is, but what, that's waste of effort. This time I'm going all the way around to here. If I went all the way around, it would be 360. I skipped this part. I stopped short. So it's 360 minus 75. Every quadrant is going to be handled a little bit differently. God gave you a wonderful brain. You need to use it. All right. One more problem. One more kind of problem. Number eight. This, believe it or not, you've already done, but it's just written as a word problem. Ah! We have an airplane flying at a speed of 410 miles an hour on a bearing of 200 degrees. Uh-oh. This is different. 200 degrees. Does anybody remember how we draw airplane courses? Like their, their path of travel. Do you remember how we draw that? <laughs> yeah, we learned it. It starts at due north and it goes this way. This is the compass. You know the or was it was you talking about the circle thing? Yep. A long time ago? Yep. Now, when do we use this setup? Only when we have an airplane or a ship or something traveling in a direction. We never use this setup for any other kind of problem. Now, he's on a bearing of 200 degrees. All right, this is zero, this is 90, this is 180, here is 200. Would you agree that that would be about where 200 is? Yes. Yeah. South is 180, so he's a little bit past south, right? And his speed is 410. And your job is to find the components. That is X and Y. We've already practiced that. What did we say X goes with? X goes with cosine. Now here's the problem. How big is that angle right here? You need to figure this out. Now let's use our brains. God gave us brains. How big is this angle right here? 70. He is on target. Kids, how far is it from here to here? 200. 200. How far is it from here all the way to here? 270. So is not that different 70 in there? 
So the cosine of, se of 70 equals x over 410. And the sine of 70 equals y over 410. So let's find those components. That was your job, just like we did before. 410 cosine 70. I got 140.23 and 385.27. If you were grading my paper, would you give me a perfect score? No. Why not? They're both negative. Why are they both negative? They're in the third quadrant. All right, that's enough for today. We packed it in. That's enough for today. All right. High day on Monday. I'll write your homework on the board because I don't have it in school.